Let's build your Google Ads campaigns, timestamps below, along with some other helpful links and resources, including a link to our Google Ads playbook with all of our recommended campaign settings, some keyword and ad formulas to help you get started. So if you already have a Google Ads account, here's the timestamp to jump straight into building out the campaign. Otherwise, you'll go to ads.google.com and you can either sign into your account or you can click to create a new account. Now you'll sign in with your Gmail address. You can always change this later. Just choose one that you're going to be, your Gmail address that you're going to be using for business. Once you do, you'll come to a page that might look something like this, and you're going to want to look at the bottom to switch to expert mode, marketer mode, advanced mode, whatever on earth they're calling it by the time you're watching this video, because you want both hands on the steering wheel, and hopefully you can get to a page that looks something like this. Now, if you already have a Google Ads account from your campaign dashboard or overview, just click the blue plus button and click on create new campaign and you'll be in the exact same place. So hopefully we can all make it to this point so we can actually start building our campaign and have both hands on the steering wheel. Speaking of both hands on the steering wheel, we're going to start by selecting create campaign without goals or guidance. And this is a reoccurring theme you'll see. We just want to have a lot more control when it comes to setting up our campaigns. We don't need as much help as most people do because you have YouTube University, you know what to click. Whereas Google's trying to help people who are brand new and they make more money, the more money we all spend, right? And sometimes that comes in front of actually getting us more customers and growing our business. So that's just my personal opinion. Let's go ahead and click on search and then we'll ignore the conversion events for now. Link in the cards in the description to a full blown tag manager video that goes through how to set up all these conversion events and get a little fancy with your campaigns, including remarketing. So we'll go ahead and click on continue here. We'll give our campaign a name and just name it something basic that makes sense to you. We'll go ahead and click on continue here. We'll start with our daily budget. I'll start at $5 a day. And of course, Google's immediately going to tell us that we should spend more money. <laughs> of course, they make more money the more money you spend, right? So when it comes to your daily budgets, you want to think of this as an overall from an overall account perspective because each one of your campaigns is going to spend that per day so since you're probably going to make multiple campaigns five to ten dollars a day is going to be plenty and you can always increase your budget if something's working right better to look at a campaign and go oh i should have spent more money as opposed to oh i spent too much money right so then we'll come down to bidding now, of course, Google has all of these recommended bidding types. You can target CPA, you can target return on ad spend, a specific cost per conversion. You know, it's really cool. However, you don't want this when you're just getting started. You want both hands on the steering wheel. So we'll click on select bid indirect method, and then we're going to select manual CPC and uncheck enhance CPC. So this ensures that when we say, hey, Google, we will pay two or two, three, four dollars per click, Google will not spend more money than two, three, or four dollars per click. All the other options gives Google some big or little wiggle room in terms of how much you pay per click. So this just makes sure your budget stays under control and you can find the best keywords and ads and then you can get fancy in the future using some of Google's black box algorithms that are really cool after you know what's working. So we'll go ahead and click on more settings here add rotation, and you're going to want to select do not optimize. This is really important. So here's an example of why this is so important. Let's say you come back in a week and your ads have gotten 600 impressions. That means they've showed up 600 times. Well, with the option we just selected, ad number one will get 300 and ad number two will get 300. And let's say one ad got 10 clicks and another got two. Well, it's pretty easy to know the first ad got more clicks, so that's the one we should continue working with. But if you let Google rotate and optimize indefinitely, you might come back in a week and find that one ad got 500 impressions, that means it showed up 500 times, and the other ad only showed up 100 times. Well, how on earth are we supposed to figure out which one worked better if one showed up 500 and the other only showed up 100? Well, spoiler alert, you can't, right? So that's why you need to optimize indefinitely. And this allows you to come back to your ad campaigns and see which ads are working and actually improve as opposed to turning all control over to Google. Now, if you're setting this up and you're like, I, I don't wanna do anything. I just wanna throw money at Google and let them figure it out. Then you can go ahead and leave it at best performing. So we'll go ahead and click on continue here. Hopefully it has been too much time on that. Now for network settings, we just uncheck everything here. 
you, this will ensure that our ads only show up on Google search. Display network and search network should never be in the same campaign. That's a better way to put it. Let's move on. So next we have locations. Now location options, you want to select presence, people in or regularly in your targeted locations, unless you're a hotel or in travel, then you'll leave it at this. And this setting presence essentially makes sure that the person is physically in the place that we're targeting. Whereas hotels want people who are interested in the place that they're targeting because they're trying to target people who are going to come visit, whereas we are targeting people where we're actually going to be shipping or who are within a certain radius of our physical location. So we'll go ahead and click on enter another location and click on advanced search. Never do radius because it's not going to help you optimize your campaigns and you're going to click add locations in bulk. Now here is where you're going to list out the, the states, territories, provinces, or if you're only targeting a specific state, or territory or province, then you're going to list out all of the major county cities. And if you're in a really local area, then you're going to list out the zip codes. It's very important that you are incredibly detailed here. And the more detailed you are here, the easier it will be to read your campaign data in the future. So link in the description to our Google Ads playbook that goes through exactly how to optimize your location targeting once you have some data. So in this particular instance, I'm going to be targeting the whole United States. So I'll jump over to our campaign builder. This is an optional tool. Uh, link in the description it has a bunch of uh, countries as well and areas for you to kind of come up with your own targeting. And we'll go ahead and paste it in. We'll click on search. And you see it's matched all 50 locations. So we'll go ahead and click on target all. And then it will show us a map of what it is targeting. So you see here, Google got a little confused with Washington, probably Washington DC and Washington state. So we'd have to go and modify that. For time purposes, I won't, but you just want to make sure that the map shows all of the areas that you want to target and that there's no overlap. You don't want any overlap on your map. So don't use zip codes and neighborhoods in the, in the same campaign. Use all zip codes or all neighborhoods, not both. So there's no overlap in your targeting. So we'll go ahead and click on save. I should have fixed Washington there. And then we're all set for our location targeting. It'll be a lot easier to optimize because we've entered all of our locations. Languages, I typically leave this alone because we're targeting keywords. So by default, someone's going to type in the, the proper language. And then for audience segments, this is awesome for YouTube ads and display ads, not for search. I pretty much say never use audience targeting for search. And then for dynamic search ads, you're going to go ahead and leave these alone for now. This is something you can play with later. So coming down to more settings, you are going to want to set a start and end date. So I'm going to, I'm recording this earlier, of course, because it always takes us a long time to edit. So let's say I start this on a future Monday, and then I say that I'm going to let this run for two weeks. So I always set an end date when I'm first getting started because Google will keep spending your money. They've heard every excuse under the sun as to why you didn't turn off your campaign, and they don't care. They're going to charge your credit card. You're not gonna get your money back. And if you do any sort of charge back shenanigans, they'll just suspend your account and then you can't run anything, right? So make sure you put an end date and that way you, you can always come back and increase the amount of time that your campaign is running. <laughs> wow, I am uh, not speaking clearly today. Then for ad schedule, only add this if you're physically calling people. So if you have, if you're going to be doing call ads in the future, or you need to be able to call someone back or give someone a call immediately, then go ahead and do this. Otherwise, go ahead and leave this alone. And then for more setting campaign URL options, go ahead and leave this alone as well. So we'll go ahead and click on next here. And with that, we've actually set up our campaign and we're all set and good to go. So if we jump over to our campaign diagram here, you'll see at the very top, we've gone through all of our budget and location and bidding style and time time frame for the campaign. And now we're on level two, which is the ad groups. And this is where we tell Google who specifically we want our show to show our ads to. So kind of as a pyramid, as we go through all of these settings, they're going to apply to each level below. So all of the campaign settings we just set up will apply to our ad groups as well. So let's jump back into our interface here and create our ad group. For our default bid, I'll go ahead and start at $2 per click. Now, of course, this is going to vary a lot depending upon your niche or industry. So here is a 
quick little chart from WordStream, this is not our data, obviously, that goes through 2021 numbers on averages based on your niche or industry. Obviously, things like eternal, attorney and legal services or dentists are going to be paying six to eight or nine dollars per click. Whereas if you're in health or fitness, you're going to maybe pay five. And of course, something like restaurants and food or sports and recreation is going to be less than two dollars per click. These, of course, are averages. You can always start between two to three dollars per click. If your average, industry average, is above $5, then I'd recommend you start at at least $5. But most of us, $2 per click is going to be plenty. Next, we have our keywords. Now, this, of course, is a video in and of itself, so link in the cards and the description to a full-blown keywords planner that goes through the exact process to find your keywords. For time purposes here, I'm going to switch over to our campaign builder again and just grab a copy of some pre-formatted keywords just so you don't waste time watching me try and look some up. Now, Google does have this little thing here where it allows you to enter your URL or search by services, but for the most part, the keywords that that will give you are just way too broad and they're not actually going to be very good in terms of actually getting you buyers. So if you're not quite sure what keywords to use here, here's a quick little cheat sheet linked up in the description in our Google Ads playbook that you can use to quickly put together some buyer keywords for your campaigns. And of course, what's most important with your keywords is they do represent buyers. You don't want anything that is represents someone searching that isn't directly tied to someone looking for your product or service because you're paying a lot per click. So we just want to make sure we only pay when someone's actually ready and actively looking to purchase something. So that does it for your keywords. Now in this setup interface, the new interface here, it only allows you to set up one ad group. So going back to our diagram, you're actually going to want to set up three to five ad groups and have no more than three to seven keywords. You can always make more campaigns in the future. As a general rule of thumb, the more specific you are with your keywords and your campaigns and your ad groups and your ads, the better your performance will be. So link in the description to our playbook that goes through some more details on what other ideas for other ad groups and campaigns. So let's go ahead and jump into your ads. So obviously this one could also be a video in and of itself. So to save some time, I'll just come over to our campaign builder and start copying some information. So I'll skip to when I'm done. And just like that, all of our information has been pasted in because nobody likes sitting around watching someone copy paste a bunch of things. So we have our final URL, our display path one and two. This is a great area to talk, to build some urgency around whatever it is that you're offering. So saying things like flash sale, limited discount, Sometimes you can get away with saying results guaranteed, although I'm not telling you to say that because that's definitely technically against the terms of service of Google. But what we have found is that sometimes something that you say in the headline that's blocked and your account can't run or your, your ad can't run, we're able to say kind of the same thing in the URL path and we're able to get away with it. So that's not me saying trying to skirt around things, that's just saying that they seem to be a little more lax when it comes to what you say in your URL path. Now for your headlines here, you want to be very clear, concise, and to the point, right? We're just saying exactly what it is that we're offering. And the whole point is entering the conversation in your ideal customer's mind. And we'll go through a simple exercise to figure out how to actually write your headlines in a moment. And then for your descriptions, you have two description lines. You can add more and they'll kind of rotate them for you. You really don't need to spend a lot of time on your description lines. Just be literally descriptive and then just move on because 90% uh, of your ad's performance is going to be your headlines. Now, Google is pretty much almost always going to tell you your ad strength is poor until you add a ton of different headlines and just start literally putting keywords as your headlines which is not a good idea in most instances. So don't worry when Google tells you your ad strength is poor, that doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. Now there is one important note here, and that is all of these headlines are going to be rotated. So gone are the days, well, almost gone. Uh, almost gone are the days where we could control headline one, 
two, and three. So you can see in this preview, minimalist, minimalist leather from 95, luxury sport, and modern men's. Each one of those is a headline, and Google is actually going to rotate these. So you'll see in the animation here that they'll actually start changing up the order of your headlines automatically trying to figure out which one works best, which is awesome if you just wanna sit back and do nothing. Not cool because now you don't really know which headline combination is working the best. So when you're creating your headlines, you can come over here to this pin button and then tell Google only put modern men's watch in section in space number one. So it's never going to be the third one or the second one. And then all of these other ones will rotate. And so if you're creating multiple ads, maybe just pin one of your headlines and then pin a different one. Like if I make ad number two, I'd go ahead and pin classic men's watch instead and then see which one performs better. So it's not ideal, but it does at least allow you to know, hey, what's the difference between these two ads? And that is the first headline, which of course does make the biggest difference. And link in the description to our playbook that goes through exactly how to go through this process of split testing with uh, some other examples as well. So let's go ahead, click on done here. And then with when we click next, we'll have the option to create something called extensions. Link in the cards in the description to a full-blown Google Ads guide that goes through extensions. We'll go ahead and skip all of these for now since we're just doing a basic campaign setup. We'll go ahead and review. Of course, it's gonna say, spend more money. You're, you'll get more clicks if you spend more money. And of course, that's, that's always true. You're pretty much always gonna have this unless you're spending like two or $300 a day. So we'll go ahead and publish our campaign. It will go live the coming Monday from the recording of this video, which is now in the past. And with that, we have our first ad group and we have our campaign. So after this, coming back to our diagram, you'd go ahead and make some other ad groups with some other keywords. And then of course, create ads specifically designed for those keywords. Now, when it comes to actually writing your ads, you can go through a simple process. Just go over to Google, search your keyword, and then look at the other ads that are already running. And you're going to want to look for what results are promised, what are the pain points, features, objections that other people talk about, what specifically is being offered, like what product or service are they using to actually get people in the door, because you may not want to offer your main product or service to just get people over to your site and actually make an initial purchase. And then of course, you also want to see what kind of social proof that they use. And with that, you are all set good to go, writing your ads, setting up your ad groups. Here again is the diagram of the keyword formulas that you can use, link in the description to the playbook that has all of these and more. So thank you so much for watching. Since really hope you have a lot more confidence when it comes to getting started with the new Google Ads interface for search ads. Hit that like button, subscribe for more guides just like this one. Check out that Google Ads playbook. And until the next, keep building the business you love.